On today's episode, we are going to take a look at two new growth stocks. And the first bit stock we're going to take a look at is one that helps other businesses increase their sales over time and it improves the CRM tools that they use. So it's integrated with companies like Salesforce and other CRM tools out there. The second company we're going to take a look at is one that deals with augmented reality uh, and it helps it, it, it right now is making smart glasses that is used in the manufacturing world, in the health world. It, it's used in all different platforms. And before they even made it to this video, for me to find these two growth stocks, they have to go through a process where, where they have to meet certain criteria. If they don't meet those criteria, I have to continue to look and look until I finally find two companies. So it definitely takes some time. So today's episode is gonna be broken down into the following. First, I think the most important thing is we have to understand what the business does and, and where, what products it has, what solutions does it solve. The second thing we're going to talk about is um, any recent news. What has affected this company? How has this company been affected recently? And next, we're going to take a look at the expected growth in the future for this company. Like I mentioned, both of these are growth companies. So we should expect that growth to be obviously higher than the market. Next, we're going to take a look at the financial health. Make sure that they are financially stable. Do they have strong balance compared, strong assets compared to debt? And at the end, I'm going to give my thoughts for each company. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. And like always, if you are new to my channel, if you are a long-term investor, if you want to learn about growth stocks, make sure to hit that subscribe button. To all my returning viewers, thank you so much for the support. It truly, truly means a lot. And like always, if you guys want to get in contact with me, YouTube comments is the best place, Twitter, my Discord channel, my, my newsletter at josenaharo.com, and on Twitch, you can find me there Sundays at 8.30 Eastern Time. But remember, all of this is my opinions. I am by no means a professional, so none of this should be taken as advice, and make sure to talk to a financial advisor before making any decisions. So let's get started. And let me know in the comments, guys, which one are you more excited to see? Are you more excited to see this one that's dealing with helping co other companies increase their sales? Or are you more excited about the augmented reality um, glasses company? To be honest, I do think both of them are pretty cool, but I I'm a little more excited about the augmented reality one. But that's not to say the first one we're going to take a look at is bad. Remember, I mentioned they go through a process before even making it to this video. And remember, and don't forget, guys, today, Sunday at 8.30 Eastern Time, I will be on Twitch. Feel free to come by. This is the time I, I have to with the community. If you guys want me to take a look at any stocks, if you guys just want to chat about the overall market or just chat in general. So the first company we're going to take a look at is Zoom Info Technologies, Inc. This is ticker CI. This has recently gone IPO in early June. Early June 4th, it ended It ended the day at $34. I, I think the IPO price was $21, but we can see most of the times we are not able to enter at those IPO prices. Compared to IPO, right now the company is down 6%. It's sitting at about $32, $32 closing on Friday. But this business, this company has peaked in stock price. It peaked at all the way at $53. So compared to its peak, it's down almost 40%. And right now we have seen a correction in many growth stocks. And since that correction in early September, it is down almost 16%. So we can see right now, thanks to this cor correction, it might give us nice buying opportunities for growth stocks as these valuations have come back to at least somewhat respectable values. All right, so first, let's try to understand what Zoom Info does. And the best place to do this is always go to the company's website. So Zoom Info is a leading go-to market intelligence platform for sales and marketing teams. Their cloud-based platform provides highly accurate and comprehensive information on the organization and professionals they target. This enables sellers and marketers to shorten sales cycles and increase win rates by delivering the right message to the right person at the right time to hit their numbers. So you might be like, Jose, so this is a CRM tool and CRM is Customers Relationship Management. One of those companies that many people know is Salesforce. So right, Salesforce, what it does, it collects information on customers, their regions and what type of products they buy to help sales teams make those sales. 
But the thing with with Salesforce, and this is what Zoom Info does, it actually integrates with those types of platforms. We can see here the integration. It integrates with like HubSpot, Outreach, Marketo, Salesloft, Salesforce, Microsoft Dynamics to make sure that information from, from those CRM tools are up to date. One thing that happens pretty frequently is companies within companies the person you're trying to target, if, if it's that if it's the salesperson in that team, in that side, they might have quit. They might have changed emails. They might have changed phone numbers. All their contact information could change dramatically. So that information is not up to date. So Zoom Info comes in and makes sure that information is, is up to date. So the team, the sales team does not spend time trying to get in contact with the right person, trying to get in contact with them at the wrong time. And, and like I said, it, it's integrated with a lot of great platforms right now. And that's a great thing to start off. And here we can see some other tools that they do. They have a, a YouTube channel and in their YouTube channel. You can see some of their subscriptions that some of the some of the products they do. So, for example, here, let's take a look. If, if Sarah was somebody you were looking for, Sarah was just hired at Omega Corp. So now you know that, hey, Sarah is no longer in that other position that I once knew she was in. Now she's in a new company. And in this company, maybe I can sell this type of product to her. Over here, it tells you, for example, John left his position at Acme. Big Search, Inc um, Big Search Incorporations purchased a new company, so now they have an acquisition. Now we can understand, hey, maybe I can talk to their teams now that they acquired this company and they might pr need this product from me. Jessica was just promoted to senior vice president. I have great relationships with, with Jessica. Now I can go and, and talk to her about these products now that she's senior vice principal. Applied Widget secure $30 million in Series B fundings. Oh, wow, this company just collected money. Let me try to find who is their salesperson at that time because now that they have fundings, they will most likely be able to buy this product. So we can see right now how, how this is different from, from Salesforce. So this incorporated with Salesforce or HubSpot or Outreach makes a super a, a, a super team. So the most recent earnings on August 10th, um, which was about a month ago, revenue for this comp for for Zoom Info was 110 million dollars, and this is up 62 percent compared to same time last year, and it beat expectations by five dollars and 32 cents. And then we take a look at gap earnings per share were negative 22 cents, which missed by three cents. And a lot of people might be like, Jose, but Zoom Info is, is profitable right now. It is profitable if you look at non-gap earnings per share. And, and that's it right now. It gave a non-gap earnings per share of seven cents, which beat by two cents. For me, I don't tend to look at non-gap uh, non -gap earnings per share. I I'm more of a gap earnings per share. They also gave guidance for quarter three. Zoom Info expects revenue of 116 million uh, or to 118 million. And that's way better than what was expected of them. It, it was expected to have somewhere around 112 million. And that's a that's gonna be a little bit higher compared to the same time compared to this quarter, but it's most likely gonna be a double digit growth compared to the same time last year. And for the full year, Zoom Info sees 450, around 450 to 455 million dollars in revenue. The overall expectation for this business was 440 million. So it's and it's beating. It it seems to be beating expectations in both the quarter and the year. So we can see the market is very is is showing that this is a company that's needed if we're seeing that type of revenue growth at the moment. Now let's take a look at some recent news. So on August 20th of 2020, Zoom Info priced a secondary offering at $37. So right now the stock price, like I mentioned, is $32. So it's cheaper than that second offering. And the main, I, I do believe the main reason for this offering is the is insiders who are selling. The company itself offered no shares and will receive no proceeds. So why why were insiders selling at thirty seven dollars gives a kind of a, a a negative taste in in other investors in other investors mouth right it's like hey why are the insiders willing to share this at 37 is this what they believe is, is the high point the great thing right now it is sitting at 32 dollars, so that's almost a, a 10 percent um more like a 15 percent below that that sales price uh, that sales price offering 
All right, so now let's take a look at the future growth for Zoom Info. So Zoom Info right now, like I mentioned, it is, it is. look at this revenue growth. We can see in this chart, revenue is expected to grow dramatically in the upcoming years. In, non, in gap earnings per share, this company, like I mentioned, is not profitable, but it is expected to be profitable in mid-2022. And when I take a look at, uh, at growth companies, I I would like to I like to invest in companies that are expected to be profitable within the next three years, and this is definitely hitting um, hitting the mark with Zoom Info. It's also a company that is expected to be uh, that's the revenue growth is expected to be twenty five point two percent annually on average for the next three years and, and that's insane to grow on, on annually on average that much um many people consider 15 percent annual growth uh to be to be uh to be considered a high growth stock so this is growing 25 percent when the market's only expected to grow 9.6 percent and the industry is only expected to grow 6.2 percent earnings are also expected to grow at crazy levels so one thing though we do see that the company is not profitable right now and when the business is not profitable i tend to be a little bit harder on that balance sheet because if they don't if they're not making money right now we have to make sure that they have plenty of cash compared to that debt um so that's that's gonna be the next thing we're gonna take a look at now let's take a look at the financial health so if we take a look at the financial health zoom info right now has about 259 million dollars of cash and short-term investments but look they have 756 million dollars of total debt and you're gonna be like jose you tricked us man you told me you went through a whole a whole a whole process and made sure that this company had a strong balance sheet now you're telling me this company has a lot more debt than it has cash and you were just saying you were being tough with it just because the company has more debt than cash doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. It just says we need to look a bit closer within that debt. If that debt, it, we have to see when that debt is due. If it's due in the next year, in the next two years, then yes, it, it will be scary. But if it's due in the next five years, in the next six years, then it'll be, for me at least, it's more understandable, right? Because right now rates are pretty cheap. So having debt for six, seven years might not be the worst thing ever. So obviously I have to go and take a look at their most recent 10Q report. So here we see their 10Q report. They have long-term debt of 743. So we're like $743 million. Um, how is that broken down? So next I, I had to take a look at, at their at their... 10k report and see where that loans or, or what kind of debt do they have and here in note 7 they mentioned that they have this first lien turn loan which has right now a uh, elective interest rate of the LIBOR plus 3.75 percent and that's the 743 million dollars of debt but look at the maturity date this debt is not due to six years from now so if it's not due till six years from now, then to me, it's more, it's understandable for them to have this other debt. They don't have any long-term debt that's due within the next two years or even within the next three years. So now this is okay. We, we check, we make sure their balance sheet is good. Even though it has a lot higher debt than cash, that debt is not due anytime soon. And one thing I did forget to mention earlier is where this company, how its company makes revenue. We mentioned, right, $110 million of revenue this quarter but where does it come most of it is just subscription based so this is a SaaS business it's a software as a service it's just a more of a reoccurring revenue so right now it has um, most all, all of it comes from subscription services all right so next let's take a look at a quick valuation uh forward price to sales ratio so forward price to sales ratio for this business at the end of December of 2021 is 8.34 8.34 to in my opinion is not that bad I, i'm pretty i'm pretty sure that when this company was at its peak here at, at 53 dollars it had a forward price to sales ratio of closer to 20 and that's where we were seeing most software most companies like this um but now due to the other corrections i'm happily I'm, I'm happy that i'm seeing these forward price to sales ratios back below 10 and those are the values i personally like to see so eight point uh, a forward price to sales ratio of 8.3 what do we have right now we have a business that is growing at dramatic levels in revenue we have a business that's expected to be profitable within the next three years and even though it has a balance sheet that 
in the top overview looks kind of bad we see that it has a lot more debt than we do than it does cash when we take a closer look at it we can see that that debt is not due anytime soon so to me it's a-okay so zoom info to to my opinion right just not just because i talk about these companies doesn't mean i'm gonna buy them i i do believe i i just like learning about new companies and sometimes I might not find them interesting, but someone else might. And, and, and I, bo- I do believe that might be the value I'm bringing with these videos and with this podcast is, hey, some some person might find it interesting um, to have this type of business. They want to maybe go out, so, uh, maybe want to diversify it outside of, of, of whatever sector they're in and trying to hit here. And they might want to do some more research after this. And this is my thing. For me, Zoom Info, I have three tiers of stocks, tier one, tier two, and tier three. Tier ones are usually my top positions, and these are the ones I have the most conviction on. And they are all, all tier three, all tiers. Let me just say this: all tiers go through intensive, intensive research before going there. And all tiers are expected to all stocks in each tiers are expected to give me better results than the overall market. For me, Zoom Info is one that if it was to enter my portfolio, it would be a tier three stock. And again, that doesn't mean it's a bad investment. Like I said, I still believe it would beat the market in the long term of things uh, and just my opinion. But it's not a market I'm truly, truly bullish in. But like I said, for me, I like holding multiple positions, especially multiple positions that I believe will beat the market. The second company I want to take a look at is a Six, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I should have probably Googled that. But again, another United States company. I, there were a lot of high growth companies in the China and China outside international, but I, I really wasn't too interested right now, especially in my personal view. I, I might be I have already positions international. So I'm, I want to come back home right now and just increase my increase my positions here in the united states headquarters is here in the united states this is ticker v as in victor u z as in zebra i and you can find it in the nasdaq right now this has a market cap of 171 million dollars so this is a very small cap company and like i mentioned this deals with smart wearable technologies so let's take a look at uh, at their products. So like I said, the best place to go is go to their websites and try to understand what they do. If you look at their products, most of their products are actually smart glasses and that's what they're using. And the smart glasses are, they have different brands and the solutions they're in in manufacturing, field services, warehouse logistic, telemedicine. And you might be like, Jose, how do they work? And we're going to take a quick information, but let's try to understand a bit more how, how in manufacturing would work. So in manufacturing, if, if let's say you're trying to build a car or some crazy product or some crazy product with these glasses, it would give you the instructions on, on, on the field of view. So you understand the next step to go. In warehouse logistics, it might be like, if, for example, let's say if a company like Amazon, an employee is trying to grab the correct items, it would it, with the with some form of, of understanding of the layout, it would be like grab this product. You need one of this for for this for the shipping. So like this, it saves the employee time from looking around. Once it grabs that QR code, which can be done a lot faster than humans can can find things, it just helps that, that person grab that product and put it. In telemedicine, we can, we can probably understand where, and field services, let's say something needs to get fixed, it has it has like tools inside of it to be able to show what's the next step of fixing it. And we can see there, they, they have microphones, they have glasses, they have video on, they have camera on as well. So it, I, I personally think this one's pretty cool. I even downloaded some of their products and here, here we can see on this PDF file what I was talking about. This is in the logistics service. So this is, it has the camera here, it has some lenses. And here if you, it, it tells you, hey, this is the product you needed to use. These are not the products you need. And it tells you the quantity. In manufacturing, for example, if they're trying to make an item, it shows you where to mark, what to mark, and then once you mark, you can say next, and it will it will give you the next item to go from it. So, I, I, like I said, I think the, these are pretty cool because in the it's technologies that I believe in the future will continue to go. It can it can go way further from this. The other thing I believe it's it's something that can be, in my opinion, can be licensed. 
I feel like I'm, I'm talking like Mr. Wonderful right now. If you guys watch uh, Shark Tank, he's always talking about licensing deals. And I do believe technology like this is something that can be licensed to other companies so they don't have to build this product. All right, so now that we understand their products, let's try to look at their most recent earnings. Their most recent earnings right now has um, had revenue of $3 million. We can see this is definitely a very small cap company, but that's up 39% compared to same time last year. Right now, this is another one that's not expected, that's not profitable right now. Quarter to gap earnings per share were negative 13 cents. And let's take a look at year to date. Year to date, this company has returned to shareholders about 100%. But that doesn't deter me, right? 171 million, still a small cap. So this doesn't mean it's going to grow, but it still has the potential to grow. If we take a look in the past month compared to September um, in its peak, Again, this company has had it has a correction of about 15%. So now let's take a look at some recent news. They they partner with Pro Glove, which is uh, a leader in industry wearable gloves. So now you have smart hands and smart eyes. Um, again, teamwork like this, I feel, will help. Uh, is very amazing, and the technology is going to continue to develop. So I like seeing collaborations like this. Next. Recently, on September 4th, um, they did do a direct offering, which was wear warrants at a price of $4.25, and the warrants will have an exercise price of $5.25 per share. And this was on September 4th of September 4th of 2020. And when that news hit, this, this stock price dropped over 20%. But we can see right right now with the current correction and with the current stock with the current stock price it's actually better than the offering on this on, on that was given the four dollars and 25 cents right now it's what did i mention about four dollars right four dollars so that's um that's a nice uh, less than 10 almost closer to 10 seven percent seven six seven percent i want to say below that price all right so i i like the market i like the products I, I like the growth that they're seeing right now. Now let's take a look at their future growth. This business is expected to grow 66% annually on average for the next three years. This is insane growth. This type of growth is something I don't see. And this is one I'm really, really liking. Right now, there are also, we can see they're not expected to be profitable until the end of 2023, but that's within the next three years. So that's, it, it still meets, it still meets my deadlines right now. Normally after three years, it's something I don't like to look at. And you might be like, Jose, why do you invest in it? And this is typically the case with growth stocks. With growth stocks, unfortunately, you're getting that high revenue growth, but you're usually getting that low that low earn, um, earnings at the moment. And that's an, uh, something I'm willing to take. Most of my growth stocks are like that. Eventually, they become profitable. And when they do, those returns just continue to grow and grow and grow. But remember, now that it has no earnings for the next few years, we have to make sure that the balance sheet is super, super strong. So let's take a look at the financial health. So right now, this company has debt of about $1.6 million. Again, very small company. Like we mentioned, it's a $100 million company. But it has cash and short-term investments of $13.2 million. So it has closer to a 10 to 1 cash to debt ratio. And that to me is a very, very strong balance sheet. Now let's take a look at a quick. Um, now let's take a quick look at the valuation. Forward price to sales ratio is about eight right now. Very similar to to Sun Info, and it's actually um. What are we getting here? We're getting a company with very high growth. We're seeing one that's unfortunately not expected to be profitable in it within the next few years, but in three years, it should be profitable. We're also seeing a company with a very strong balance sheet. And to me, in the market, I believe it is pretty cool. And we're seeing very cool collaborations. So again, I'm very happy to see these forward price to sales ratios go below 10 again. And this one, for me, Zoom Info was one that I, I might not get into, if, if I may be honest. But Vuzi, V-U-Z-I, this one seems pretty fun to me. Uh, it, it definitely meets a tier three criteria. And not going to lie, it might even be a tier two. So a tier two is just uh, holds a little bit more position size in my portfolio. May I say, I don't think it would ever be a tier one. But this is one that I do put, I, I do see could be a potential winner for me. So within the upcoming days, I put money in the market on a weekly basis. I do think Boozy, if it doesn't jump dramatically before I get money in the market, 
I do seeing I, I do see it being one that can enter my portfolio. So let me know in the comments, guys. Are you the, are you guys excited about any of them? This is a weekly series that I'm restarting. Um, I've been normally when earnings seasons are happening, I don't have time to do this. But when earnings seasons are done, I usually do a uh, I usually do two weekly episodes. My first weekly episode is my is the one with all the companies I recently bought and try to explain them. And then my other weekly episode is finding new growth stocks. And so I hope you guys are enjoying these series. Let me know if you do enjoy them and, and if you want to see more of them. And again, don't forget to see me on Twitch or later today at 8.30. So ho- have a good day. Have a good week, guys. Uh, let's all make money in this market. And remember, the long term wins. And, and that's what I enjoy doing. So take care, guys. Have a good night and see you next time. <music>